critical theory and its Christian roots. Um, for a long time on my channel and uh, in my books, I have maintained that the New World Order is a continuation of the prophecies of a uh, middle-aged monk, Christian monk, by the name of Joachim of Fiore. He had a three-age prophecy uh, that the age of the uh, the age of the father, the first age, was the Jewish theocracy. The age of the son was the Catholic feudal era. And the coming age, the age of the spirit, will be a, an age where uh, all text liturgy and hierarchy will have been abolished and human beings will enter into a age of liberation uh, where we will uh, be liberated not only from text liturgy and hierarchy, but pretty much every traditional uh, human institution and um, of, again this this uh, plan this plot was uh, continued by the Jesuits if you read the in secret instructions of the Jesuits it is revealed that the Jesuits are continuing the work of Joachim of Fiore this is more confirmed by the work of Tilhard de Chardin and his development of transhumanism in the Omega Point where he continuing with the Joachim system, maintains that uh, society should move toward a, um, an, an integrated internet where we could all um, debate theology on the internet, this grid that he mentioned, and that having been liberated from family, from traditional institutions, that we would have plenty of free time to sit in our domiciles on the internet and debate theology and we would all come to a consensus in our minds, uh, an agreement that he referred to as the Logos of the Omega Point. And uh, that, that's the uh, fundamental thesis of the modern New World Order. We, we, so we, we clearly see that the New World Order is Christian at its uh, root. And... Um, the number one, um, it's, it's bizarre that, you know, a lot of these 1488 or guys think this stuff is Jewish. It's hilarious. Um, kind of the, the genre of philosophy and political movement that is behind this is called critical theory. And if you see here, just the wiki article, a critical theory is any approach to social philosophy that focuses on society and culture to reveal, critique, and challenge power structures. With roots in sociology and literary criticism, it argues that social problems stem more from social structures and cultural assumptions than from individuals. It argues that ideology is the principal obstacle to human liberation. Ideology. Okay. Text liturgy. That's just another way of saying Joachim. So the, the critical theorists are Joachimites. They believe in Joachimism. And you, when you look at the, the schools of thought that have risen up in the last hundred years to destroy the traditional way that people viewed knowledge, um, the way that people have destroyed science, is they'll say, and there, there's a guy on YouTube, his name is uh, King Crocoduck, and he has some, he's a, He's a uh, an atheist, but he deals with a lot of this stuff. These uh, there's a, there's a genre of critical theory called social constructivism, and um, it's it's th this whole idea that these these SJWs have that truth is a political game, and science is a political game, and it's it's this way to get around empirical science. It's it's you know the the critical theory believes and this was you you, you read of uh, professor fire robin's work out in california and the movement that he created which is why you have this big antifa movement from berkeley that's it was the work of professor fire robin he he believed that science was getting in the way of uh human progress okay and and human rights and so um this 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 SJW movement is a Christian theology. It is a Gentile Christian theology uh, sourced in the writings and work of Joachim Fiore, Meister Eckhart, etc. And um, 
uh, <laughs> whenever you see, you know, and, and this is again, this it's, they they implicate uh, whole milk men uh, in this uh, as a way to deconstruct these ideologies and institutions that have traditionally existed in the West. And the, the, the main philosophy, the main technique they use is you can't ever know anything that everything we think we know is grounded in psychological assumptions. Okay. And we, th this is, this is just unbelievable. Um, I mean, these people will think that, um, that like, um, that the stuff that, that King Crocoduck deals with is he's, he's dealing with these feminist philosophers of science who are saying that the scientific theories we think are facts are actually based in uh, white supremacist male <coughs> assumptions. Uh, that e even like physics and stuff. They, even the words that, that, that scientists use in physics, they say are grounded in um, phallic worship and the male uh, perspective on the world. This is a fascinating channel. King Crocoduck's channel is, is really fascinating. He's dealing with social constructivism. It's really good uh, where he points this stuff out. It's, it's fascinating. And um, you, you see this work by this professor at Western Michigan University. Uh, his name is Rudolf Seibert. He wrote uh, this book. It's called A Manifesto on uh, the Manifesto of the Critical Theory of Society and Religion. And this is volume one. I'm in the, the, I'm in the introductory section here on uh, Roman numeral 14. This is a fascinating quotation. Uh, one second. Oh, I pass it up. Uh, here we go. Um, there's there's a breakdown of the history of uh, critical theory. <clears throat> he says here on Roman numeral 14, Muller's brief introduction to the dialectical idealism of the Protestant Hegel to the young Catholic Seibert, I, I would maintain that Hegel was just doing Catholic theology, he wasn't Protestant, to the young Catholic Seibert in the midst of horror and insanity of war opened the door to his life work of research not only into the works of Hegel but also to those of Immanuel Kant. You see, this is this, this whole thing about everything being interpreted that there are no bare f empirical facts, that's, a, that's Kant. Okay? And that this whole presuppositionalist movement that you have in Christianity, that's just Kant. Okay? And this is admitted. It's Kant and Hegel. It, it, this, is, this, this is the whole critical theory that has plagued traditional men in, in the West comes from Christian theology. It comes from this Platonic Christian theology and from Christian men, not, not Jews. Uh, and the, the bourgeois enlighteners of Johann Gottlieb, Fitch, Will, uh, Frederick Wilhelm Joseph von Schelling, Arthur Schopenhauer, yeah, he's a big one. Soren Kierkegaard, Karl Marx, and Frederick Engels, uh, Frederick Nietzsche, Sigmund Freud, Franz Kafka, Bert Haldbrecht, etc. Now, uh, again, um, first of all, uh, Karl Marx, as I've pointed out, his work was uh, sourced in a Jesuit priest uh, named Father Beck. Um, Bismarck actually pointed that out in his North German Gazette. And... If you look at Sigmund Freud, Sigmund Freud was for patriarchy. He did not believe in feminism. So you, you can't say that this is a, this is a uh, Jewish conspiracy. Uh, yet these modern critical, philosophical, political, economic, psychological, and cultural theories are only one facet of the dynamic, historical, and future-oriented origins of the critical theory. As Seibert explains, a critical predecessor to these theories and an essential yet all too often missed dynamic force of the entire critical theory is religion. Mm. Particularly the prophetic, messianic, eschatological, apocalyptic religions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and their critique of social injustice and class domination in the spirit of and longing for the creation of a more reconciled future society and beyond that. But you understand, when, when, when you're talking about a biblical tradition, they don't believe that ideology is the problem. Who believes, who believes that 
true spirituality is not in a code of law of written documents, but is an inward spiritual experience. The Christian Church. That the, that the, the their their interpretation of the New Testament being that the letter of the law has has been abolished and now we live in the age of the spirit that's their interpretations of of paul in the new testament that is standard christian theology okay um uh where the, the uh, of the exodus and the long for messianic future where the wolf will live with the lamb well first of all we're, you know Historic Protestants don't believe in a future, messi- a, a, a longed-for messianic future. We believe that the Messiah came uh, 2,000 years ago and established his kingdom 2,000 years ago. So this has nothing to do with historic Protestant Gentile theology. This is something Christian. Okay. When the wolf will lie with the lamb, you understand. There's, there's the 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 Baptist view. First, first of all, the traditional Christians, the the Messianic, uh, the, I'm sorry, the Orthodox, the Eastern Orthodox, or Roman Catholic, they don't have eschatologies. They, they they don't deal with prophecy. All they deal with was metaphysical gobbledygook. Um, the Baptist religion has kind of taken the mantle that that Baptist futurist system. That's pretty much taken over the world. The vast majority of Christians believe in that Baptist futurist thing, which was created by a Jesuit priest named Emmanuel uh, Lucunza and Francisco Ribera. Not not hook noses, sorry. Where weapons of violence, war, and death will be transformed into instruments that provide life and happiness, not for the Alpha, but for the Omega God of a new creation, Revelation 21. Yeah, that's Gnostic. Not not for the Old Testament God, but the New Testament God. That's you know. For the Christian mystics, God beyond God, the ineffable, unimaginable, totally whole other, that's traditional Christian theology, divine simplicity. In his explication of this critical theory of society and religion manifesto, Seibert also incorporates both a biblical scholarship as well as a profound comprehension of and command of the works of such theologians, mystics, and Christian humanists as Augustine, Aquinas, Anselm, Joachim of Fiore, Meister Eckhart, Jacob Boom, Thomas Munzer, Martin Luther, John Calvin, Maimonides, the Kabbalah, Gershom, Sholem, Walter Dirks. Okay, and we know the Kabbalah was a Middle Age creation. It was based on Gentile European Neoplatonism. Okay, etc., etc., so we, we see that Joachim and Meister Eckhart play a central role here in critical theory and its inspiration. And it has to do with Christian theology, specifically the Gnostic version, which is all Christianity is, it's Gnosticism. The traditional Orthodox Christian deflections from Gnosticism were extremely, which is mental gymnastics. There was nothing substantial in their break from uh, Gnosticism. Um, it's just mental gymnastics and constant contradictions. So we see that the critical theory tradition is rooted in European Christian metaphysics. This whole idea that the the New Testament uh, brought the the New Covenant brought in an age divorced from the letter of the law, from the words of the Bible, and you you can read this book by Emil Bruner. It's, it says truth as encounter. And which is just traditional Christian theology, that truth is not a set of propositions. Truth is an encounter with the Logos principle. This is the source of the, of the critical theory to postmodernism, the Frankfurt School. All of this is rooted in Christian metaphysics. And this, this break away from, from empirical science... Again, an, another uh, aspect of Christian theology. You can, you can read my biblical materialism essay. I go into detail on, on all this. All right. So uh, who is to blame for the critical theory tradition in the West? It is the Christian church. Southern Israelite signing off. Go to my platform website, southernprotestant.com. Go to my um, uh, about page on that website. You can get a 
uh, introduction to this platform. Um, go to my blog, Southern Israelite at WordPress. Hit that donation link in the description. Southern Israelite signing off. Peace.